<clears throat> All right, good evening, everybody. Terry Daniel, voice actor and coach from lovely Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm uh, hoping you're tuning in from all over the globe. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few people to get in here. I, there's actually, it's a couple minutes before six o'clock, so I'm going to end up just kind of talking um, to myself here for a while. But uh, this is just kind of, we're, we're doing the webinar, the VoiceOver Camp webinar a little differently tonight. I've just decided to do it via Facebook Live. It's really easy. You just pop into the group and here, I, you know, here I am to answer any questions that you might have about voiceovers in general. Uh, anything from auditioning to marketing to getting started doing voiceovers. I know we have a lot of people in this group that have been sitting on the fence, lurking, watching other people get work and doing demos. And we'd like to encourage you to get off that fence and uh, and work with us. But uh, more about that a little bit later on. This isn't just a commercial for our coaching service. Or is it, Rob? Rob Marley is here. What does that say, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got like three and a half hours of sleep last night. I can I'm wearing cheater glasses right now and I still can't read the comments. That shows you how old I'm getting. But uh we'll give people just a few minutes to get into the room here. We'll just ramble. And uh Rob Marley is here in text form. The desktop version of Facebook Live doesn't work with multiple webcams just yet. It'll work on a phone, but then everything will be kind of like all like all over the place. Yes, just like that. All right, I'll do it again. So uh, we've got a few people here. Dan Harcourt, fences are for people looking over the other side. Yes, that is a good point. Put that on a bumper sticker. Dan Harcourt <laughs> will market it and sell it. Um, so uh, welcome. This is basically, hello, Jason Arnold, who works with us, one of our uh, fine mentorees who's off to a really good start. A younger voice, very... Uh, very animated and energetic and uh, knows what the hell he's doing and what he's talking about. Tawny Plattis has entered the room. Um, it's, you know, this, it's, it's, this, this is kind of creepy because it reminds me of those old party chat lines, you know, one 900 party. Anybody remember those? <laughs> Maybe that dates me too. just call one nine, seven, six, shut the up. No. Um, so everybody's here. Not everybody, but, uh, you know, we've uh, we've got a few people in here now. This is just a general Q and A uh, session. Anything goes. I don't care if you smoke weed. I don't care if you drink beer. Have a bloody mary. Turn the tunes on. Listen to, listen to some acid rock in the background. This I want this to be a party tonight. All right. So um, Dave Edwards is here. Party phone lines. Yes. Did any of you guys ever do voiceovers for some of those party lines? Just call 1976. Shout it out. Um, yes, obnoxious. Steve is here. Dave Edwards, Ian, the talented Sandy Nichols, one of our voiceover students from Fort Collins, Colorado, is here. Kevin McAdams, a new voice. Jason Arnold is that freedom rock. <laughs> Leela is here. So everybody's uh, slowly showing up. You know, seriously, grab yourself a bottle of water. Uh, whatever you want to drink here. Uh, drinks around the house. As a matter of fact, Jan Anderson, who lives in the Bay Area, has promised to buy everybody a cocktail tonight who comes to the webinar. Uh, I don't know how he's going to deliver on that, but maybe he'll send you a Groupon for it. Um, I don't know. Uh, hey, Terry, is an actual live recording session at all like one of your coaching sessions? Yeah, pretty much. That's a really good question. And which... You know what? We might as well just get into the questions instead of listening to all my stupid jokes. Uh, we'll start with Mike Hennessy's questions. Uh, yeah, you know what? An actual voiceover session is a lot like our coaching sessions where you have somebody like me, you know, basically pretending to be the client and listen to your reads. And then I give you feedback on all your reads. I tell you what I liked. I tell you what I what I uh, what I didn't like. I give you some direction and then you do the read again. Uh, many of you who are working with us. Uh, myself, Rob, Tawny, Jan, Jen, if you're on here somewhere, um, you know, we're voiceover coaches and that's what we do with our students. Um, but that uh, Mike brings up a good point. That is a lot uh, that that is basically how a voiceover session works. 
especially if I'm booked through a talent agent, they'll book me in a studio in my area. I'll show up about 15 minutes early, by the way, grab the copy from the receptionist, go into the vocal booth, wait for the client to arrive, and the clients do arrive, and then they give me direction on the other side of the glass, and it's my only job is to be the performer. I don't have to worry about editing. I don't have to worry about billing. Uh, you know, the, 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 basically the talent agent takes place or, or takes, uh, you know, responsibility for all that. That is agency work. You know, there's really two sides of the voiceover business. There's the agency side of the business, and then there's the independent contractor side, where a lot of us uh, work that way. Rob, Jan, you can relate with this. Tawny, other people in the, in the groups that maybe don't even have talent agents. They work directly with producers, audiovisual directors for corporations, uh, explainer video companies. This is where you do have to do a lot of the editing. You do have to do a lot of the rate negotiation. You have to do everything. You're the voice actor and you're the engineer. So you record, you do the editing, you send them the file. Uh, sometimes they like to sit on the phone and direct you while you record. And you know, even if it's not an agency gig, it's it, you know, I like to invite, invite my clients via Skype or on phone to direct me because then you know they're kind of getting what they want during one session instead of going back and forth via email with all kinds of revisions. That uh, that's my personal. You know, that's just what I do personally. Hang on a second. Jin. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, Milt is here. Panda is here. Kelsey, Ian, water, beer. Yes, Jan Anderson will be purchasing it for you. <laughs> uh, Daniel Scott Etter, who had a terrific coaching session with Jan the other day, from what I hear. Uh, Greg Wilkinson uh, is with us. Welcome, Greg. All right, I've got all your greetings. Now all I need is some questions. And Jan Anderson says, I'm editing while listening right now. Yes, we are in the multitask business. I'm actually watching the NCAA tournament while I talk to you all about voiceovers. All right. Um, Kevin, you lost the feed. Are you back? You obviously didn't lose it because if you lost the feed, you wouldn't be able to type lost the feed. So hopefully you're back. Ken Edwards is here. Sherman Thomas, the entire team is here. And Sherman's got a good question. Let's talk voiceovers now. Uh, is Adobe Audition a big help when doing recordings to send to producers or potential clients? You know what? Recording software, Sherman, is a lot like driving a car. It's whatever fits your personality. There's a million different types out there. Uh, Jan loves Audacity. He's, uh, he's been in this business for 100 years, and he still uses Audacity. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but let's talk about the different recording softwares that are out there. Adobe Audition, it's my go-to uh, uh, recording software. I've used it for about 10 years now. In fact, I used it when it was called Cool Edit Pro back when I was in radio. Shh. Uh, Sony SoundForge, uh, very good software. Uh, Pro Tools. Uh, I, I've got a fear of Pro Tools. I think there's just too much in it. It's like going to just this big, giant party, and you think there's going to be about 20 people there, and there's about 500 people there. It's a little overwhelming. A lot of plugins, a lot of extra shit that you don't need. Uh, I know there's probably Pro Tools fans uh, in this uh, particular chat. I just I don't think it's real user-friendly for the voice actor. If you're a musician, you're in a band, perfect. You know, Pro Tools it all you want. But I'm just, I've never been a fan. Um, Jan Anderson just called me a jerk. Can I, I'm going to kick him out of the room. No, but I can like his comment. Oh, I can even pin his comment. This is interesting. There we go. Um, all right. I got to scroll down, though, because I'm not looking at the questions like I should be. Um, Crystal Blue, hello. Thank you for doing this. I've been in radio for 18 years. Oh, that means we got to get rid of that radio delivery, Crystal. Uh, and I'm really interested in moving more into VO. I'm here for the info. Yeah, I was. Uh, I spent about seven years in radio, both on air and the sales side. And I got used to talking like this. Every time I would read a piece of copy, it would sound like this. It would sound like an urgent news bulletin or some type of an urgent weather bulletin. Uh, so it took me a little while to get out of that kind of feel. And I actually used about two different, I used two different voiceover coaches when I decided to really take my business seriously. And I was like, all right, I'm going to leave radio in the rear view mirror and I'm going to concentrate on voice acting. I knew I had to do a couple of things. 
I had to really curb my Minnesota accent because I used to read everything like this. I used to read everything like Jerry Lundegaard, uh, and that wasn't going to work. Jerry Lundegaard from Fargo, you get the reference there. Uh, so I, I needed somebody to help me curb that. Second of all, I needed a coach to help me get out of that radio announcery delivery so I could actually sound like a character instead of a disc jockey. And it's, it's very realistic. It just takes, a, it takes quite a while to get away from that delivery. And those of you that have come from radio or maybe who are currently still in radio know exactly what I'm talking about. Dan Harcourt is looking forward to recording my demos, says Dan. Yes, and we are looking forward to directing that particular session, Dan. Uh, Sam Doe, welcome. Tawny says Adobe is excellent. I cannot uh, disagree there. I just really enjoy the Adobe products. Plus, you know, they have a cloud version. So we, uh, my wife is a photographer, so she uses like Photoshop and Lightroom, and I use Audition. So it makes sense for us to subscribe to Adobe Cloud. I mean, you can buy the software outright, but we use so many of their products that it's easy to pay the 30 bucks a month or whatever to subscribe to Adobe Cloud. So you should definitely check that out. Um, Sam Doe, how common is it to find agency representation? Uh, it's common if your demos are good enough. And that's where kind of we come in. You know, that's my responsibility to direct and produce, you know, a killer uh, agency ready demo, as I call it. And, you know, does it always happen? Absolutely not. not. And here's the good news. You could, you could go throughout your entire career and never be represented by a talent agent. You know, is that a reason to go hover in the corner, scream and cry and give up on your career? Absolutely not. You can make a very good living doing voiceovers without any agency. Um, you know, I, I did it for a number of years. I had a number of explainer video e-learning clients that uh, kept food on the plate, uh, kept, you know, kept my mortgage <laughs> being paid on time. And, you know, then eventually I did get like three or four agents. Right now I have uh, three or four as we speak. My local agent, NUTS, that stands for Non-Union Talent Service. They're uh, an extraordinary group of people over there. You know, I get a few gigs every month from them. And if you can kind of do a little bit of both, if you can eventually get work on your own and you get that kind of two to four gigs from a talent agent every month, you know, you're doing pretty well. And, uh, you know, agency gigs pay really, really well, as Jan Anderson will attest to that. Rob Marley says, Adobe is very versatile and there's a ton of things available for it. It's a great program, especially if you pay the monthly fee. Well, the good things are worth paying for, for sure. And that goes with uh, recording software, coaching, demo production, uh, whatnot. This is uh, next to impossible to have any kind of a lucrative career in voiceover without getting some kind of mentorship. And I think a lot of people in this group uh, who are attending the webinar tonight will agree with that. Uh, it doesn't mean that you... You know, there aren't things out there for free. There's a lot of great blogs. There's voiceover books. There's great podcasts. If you're, if you're going through that kind of informational uh, period where you're just kind of doing some research, you know, it's a good thing to do. I always tell people the steps. Research like crazy, you know, and then, you know, when you're really serious, you know, hire a voiceover coach like myself or Rob, Tawny, Jan. Well, actually, we all work together. Um, <laughs> a little plug for us, right? Um, and then, you know, research, coaching, practice, demos, marketing, you know, all in that order plus some. Reaper, Dave Edwards is a Reaper fan. Jason Arnold votes for Reaper. Oh, we've got a contest going now for recording software. Um, you know, I tried Reaper once and didn't really like the way it looked and I never went back to it. I should just kind of look at it again. There was something about it just looked a little too edgy for me. It kind of put me in a bad mood. I don't, I don't know why. No offense, you guys. I know that you like it. I will, um, I will try again someday. Tawny's got a good comment here about agency representation. Isn't a big deal. Most VO actors find jobs through their own marketing efforts. <clears throat> Let me touch on that because I agree to that to a point. There's really two different sides of the voiceover industry. There's still the old school way where all people do is get booked by their talent agents. You know, there's a lot of people that live in New York and L.A. that are very dependent on their talent agents and they still do really well. And they have no clue how to even market themselves. They don't have any clue how to send an email to, to a potential client. They don't a cold call. Are you kidding me? 
one of these big LA talents make a cold call to a producer? That would be absurd and unheard of. So there's that kind of the business. And then there's people who I call, you know, independent contractor voice actors where they, they do exactly what we're talking about. They reach out to clients direct. And you know what? You can also do it both, both ways. All right. Twisted Wave. I'm glad Ken Edwards brought that up. Twisted Wave is one of the best softwares that you could have if you use a Mac. It works great on any of the, uh, like an iPhone or an iPad. Twisted Wave is incredible. That's what I use when I travel. All I use is Twisted Wave on, an, on my iPad Pro with an Apogee microphone. I'm not one of these people who brings a big pillow fort when they go on vacation and then have to post it on Facebook, making myself look all important, like I'm, I'm just so busy that I can't enjoy my vacation. If it's, if it's a job that I can't do with an Apogee mic plugged into my iPad, then uh, I, you know, I beg the client to wait until I get back from the island <laughs> or something like that, or I rent studio space in the area that I'm in. Uh, I don't, you know, these porta booths and people bring all this shit with them when they're on vacation. You know, what is a vacation? It's to get away from work. You know, I don't want to be reminded I, uh, as much as much fun as voiceovers is. I don't want to be reminded of it every two seconds, especially if I'm basking in the sun somewhere. What am I going to sit out there on the beach with my with my porta booth trying to record voiceovers? No, I want to have a cocktail and enjoy myself. That's what we work hard for. We do this. We work our asses off so we can go enjoy ourselves on vacation. Um, all right. I really should uh, take some questions. Oh, Crystal Blue, also from Minnesota. Oh, yes, Minnesota. And, oh, boy, Crystal, don't you love that when you tell somebody where you're from and they immediately have to do the Minnesota thing? That never gets old, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, thanks for mocking people that live in southern and northern Minnesota. There's plenty of people with all kinds of neutral accents that live in the metro area. So kiss off. <laughs> um, Ian says it's hard to listen to local radio commercials. No offense, but the deliveries are uniformly disappointing. Yeah, you know why? Because the it's usually the announcers that are doing the gig, you know. They don't really, especially the smaller radio stations, it's the DJ, you know, after their air shift will go and, and put in like an hour of production. And then they do all, you know, the salesman will bring the sales copy in and then they have to produce the spot. That's what you're hearing locally. And there's a lot of crappy local cable ads, too, where people just do not know how to read scripts. That's, uh, that's a really good point, Ian. Any advice? Ian Berg is here. All right. Uh, let me grab some water. Mm -hmm. By the way, thank you for being here, everybody. I'm going to sit here and ramble in your ear until about 645. You can ask all kinds of questions about the voiceover industry. Uh, Ian Berg says, any advice for audio setups on a budget? I live in an apartment and I've had issues getting a professional sound. Well, if you live in an apartment, well, here's the deal on sound. I've never been a real big fan of these little porta booth boxes that you buy. Jan, help me out. If you, I know there's a pet name for them. Um, I, I think they tend to make people sound hollow. It, it sounds like you're speaking in a box. When you hear it back, you're like, are you talking in a box? And I don't care if there's foam in it or not. I don't think it sounds that great. Uh, so, Ian, my best advice to you is to get a bunch of, like, room dividers. You know, one of those that are – some of those room dividers that are made of plastic. Put a bunch of freaking moving blankets over them. Enclose the area that you're recording in. Put some RLX foam in front of your microphone. I mean, you'll see a little bit. Where is it? Back by the guitar. Right there, there's a little bit right there, but I have it all in front of me too. And work on treating your room that way. I'm just not a fan of those porta booths. Also, get a big shaggy rug and, and put it underneath you if you have a hardwood floor. Uh, you definitely, if you got hardwood floors, you're going to hear some bounce from that. Um, so I hope that's uh, a little bit helpful. A little bit helpful. All right. Uh, Scott Walton is late, but he's here. How about a hand? For Scott Christine Walton, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the great, great comments. Rob Marley, one of the fabulous coaches on my staff. I agree local commercial VO sounds terrible, but to me that means they are in need of a good voice. Perfect opportunity to market to a potential client. That is a hell of a good point. 
And that's something I didn't really mention earlier. I was too uh, fixated on production companies, explainer video companies, e-learning companies, and audio visual departments in corporations. But you can market to radio stations too. I mean, I've been, I, I've had uh, program directors find me online and hire me for, you know, a campaign or two. Uh, usually small town radio stations that they're so sick of their on-air staff doing all the production and they kind of suck anyway. They want to hire some outside help. So if they want some real talent, that's when they call Rob Marley. Yeah. Uh, we're talking voiceovers. Uh, this is the webinar. I guess the title of this is I want to pick your brain. Um, the reason we use that title is because I get an email with that in the subject header nearly every three hours. <laughs> so we decided to do a free webinar called I Want to Pick Your Brain. And here we are. All right, Rob Marley again says apartment sound absorption. Use blankets, quilts, comforters, yep, anything big and soft and drape them over room dividers. I'm giving away a yellow lab tonight and uh, make a space. That is absolutely true. Um, you're going to hear her go nuts. It's that it's springtime is here in Minneapolis, and now everybody's walking their dogs in the cul-de-sac, and that's Utah upstairs wanting to uh, get to know that dog, and she's really pissed that there's a big, giant window in between the living room and the dog. Um, all right, so hopefully my wife will calm her down in a minute. All right, let's go to, um, oh, this is a great question by uh, Jason. Any advice on doing charitable VO work to get experience? Is it worth it? Any resources on where to look? Well, you know what? I think it's a good idea, and it's a great place to go to get started. Um, instead of just you saying, oh, I'm going to do a bunch of free voiceover work just to get my name out there, just to get my voice out there, that's really not the way to do it. Um, instead, give back to the community and volunteer, you know, for a, a, a charitable nonprofit. Not only are you helping the world to be a better place, but you're also getting your foot in the door to a potential future client. I mean, this has happened to me twice now where I volunteered for the United Way, the uh, Hennepin County uh, Humane Society, and because of the volunteer work, they literally called me six or seven months later with an actual paid gig. So it's a good way to get your foot in the door. You're giving back to the community and you're starting a relationship with a potential paid client. Uh, Rob says, read his blog post on creative intelligence. Oh my God. In, I can't read that, Rob. It's all blurry. <laughs> I'm embarrassing. Uh, what you said makes sense. I just, some, I'm, uh, some of the comments are a little fuzzy tonight, I'm sure. Uh, well, people will see your comment later on. The nice thing about doing a Facebook Live video is for those of you that came into the room late, you'll be able to actually watch the entire video uh, a little bit later on. So, um, all right. And all right, are we running out of questions already? That's not right. I bet I missed a few up here. If you've got questions voiceover related, go ahead and type them in. We'll all try to answer them as uh, as uh, quick as possible. Jan mentions a whisper room. Um, those are those can be pretty spendy, but if you live in an apartment building, that would be a much better option. Now they're <laughs> they're a little more expensive than one of those porta booth boxes, but. That would give you. That would definitely give you the treatment that you need and the proofing that you need for sure. Um, you know, I I've never really recorded in one, but I hear they're magical. And for people that live in really busy areas, or if they have a dog upstairs, or they live in an apartment building, um, a lot of these people get whisper rooms, and it's something to really think of. So, Jan, thank you for that uh, suggestion. All right, let's take some more questions here. Ken Edwards did a volunteer announcement for a local amateur theater. I assume that was volunteer work, Ken. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I assume that's what you're uh, referring to. Uh, but, uh, well, you know, go ahead and type your questions in. We're, we're, we're running out of questions already. But uh, I do want to make sure that everybody knows that VoiceOver Camp is a free Facebook group. Uh, we have really good conversations all day long, but we also have coaching programs. And 
I'm not going to sit here and do a screenshot of our voiceover training website and try to sell you a bunch of cars tonight or do anything like that. But if you're one of these people that have been kind of sitting back and, you know, maybe you've been on the fence for you're looking at the calendar and it's been over a year now and you really wanted to do this a long time ago, um, your timing is perfect because we just started spring enrollment in our voiceover coaching programs. Um, do me a favor, write this down. If you're interested in any kind of voiceover coaching or training, send us an email, contact at voiceovertraining.info. That's contact at voiceovertraining.info. Uh, then I can send you some links and some information about our voiceover coaching programs. You can send me a PM too via the Facebook Messenger if you'd like to uh, as well. So um, definitely uh, would love to uh, have you in on that. Uh, Frank, plus one for Whisper Room. I picked up a single walled four by four on Craigslist. And it's been wonderful recording without worrying about the neighbor kids shooting hoops. <laughs> See, there you go right there, the Whisper Room once again. So um, what about walk-in closets? I can't remember who it was that was asking who. I think it was, was it Ian? Was it you that lived in an apartment building? I can't remember who that was now. Um, but what about like a walk-in closet? What are those like? Do you have a lot of space in there? Even that would be better sounding than a porta booth. You could definitely put some Arlex foam up in there, some moving blankets, and uh, you could use that for your recording studio. Just make sure you give yourself plenty of ventilation. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. Rob Marley, I use a walk-in closet. And Rob has also typed the email address if you're interested in coaching with us. And frankly, why wouldn't you be? We rock. We're the best. We're the best in the business. Don't you want to work with the best? I mean, seriously, get off the fence. I'm kidding, sort of. <laughs> yeah, we like to clown around, but we do get serious when it comes to, uh, you know, coaching people and, and working on anything from script technique delivery to auditioning to marketing to uh, whatever, to getting prepared for a demo session, which is so important. Um, we've had so many people show up in voiceover camp, all excited, and suddenly they'll paste a link, hey, check out my demo. And it's a YouTube link to something that they've self-produced. And it's no fault of their own because they just don't know any better. But that's not a professional demo. You doing goofy voices for three minutes and then throwing it up on YouTube is not a professional demo. You will be laughed off the phone and out the door of an office of an agency if you ever try to uh, submit any kind of self-produced demo. They will know within the first fraction of a second if it was professionally produced or if you tried to do it yourself. So do yourself a favor if you're really passionate about making some noise behind microphones like this one and getting paid for it, get the proper training and get a demo professionally produced. Don't sell yourself short and take shortcuts because you know what? Shortcuts. Where do shortcuts lead to, Rob? I'm going to let him answer it. Ricky Smith is here. Welcome, Ricky. Hey, Terry, I'm interested in moving to L.A. as a character voice actor for animation. And I'm wondering if you have any advice on cutting a demo reel and getting an agent. Yeah, I think we should definitely cut the demo, maybe even before you move out there. Uh, we could do that here, too. We've done a number of uh, animation demos, uh, Ricky. We could definitely do that. You could send me a PM after the webinar here via the Facebook Messenger. I'll give you some information. Or you can email us at contact at voiceovertraining.info. Um, first off, let's talk about voiceovers because in the old school days, we always heard about, well, you got to move to LA or you got to move to New York to do voiceovers. And some of the, some of these old school books that are really outdated, they still say that. I don't live in LA or New York. How many people in the uh, webinar tonight live in LA or New York? Yeah, uh, you can make a very comfortable living. Uh, working from anywhere in the country because we've got the ability now to work from the comfort of our own homes, uh, recording like I do here every day and sending MP3s to clients all over the world. And then you get paid electronically via PayPal or Square or they could send you a check. I mean, it doesn't matter where it, you could live in Bismarck, North Dakota, and that would be fine. Um, to, it's It's funny because I don't really have a lot of 
Minneapolis St. Paul clients and I live in Minneapolis St. Paul, most of my clients are on the East Coast. Isn't that kind of weird? It's just kind of funny. Sometimes you're not like the biggest hit in your hometown, but yet you do a ton of work for, you know, clients out West or, or out East. So that's the beauty of voiceover is it just doesn't really matter where you live. It does help with animation, uh, like with Ricky, who wants to move to L.A. That's going to help him a lot in animation. Or if you really, really want to get into the big movie trailer, TV promo type business, it doesn't hurt to live in L.A. It doesn't. But again, you'll see there's always myths out there about the voiceover business. And one of the biggest myths I hear almost on a weekly basis well, if you want to get into voiceovers, you better start packing your bag because you got to move it. You got to move to New York or L.A. Absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. Um, Julie Rodriguez would love to bring up the issue of Voices.com. As an agent who recently left them, I wanted to put the word out. Hang on a minute. Since the change, they released barely any breakdowns, forcing many agents to leave. Their excuse, we do not guarantee breakdowns, yet they charge the full price. No refunds either, and difficult to get a hold of them. They barely, uh, the barely little amount of breakdowns they released seem fake, too, with no contact info or any details for the client, which is crucial for an agent. Well, Julie, you did the right thing of pulling out of them. Voices.com is doing their best uh, to really try to poison, <laughs> you know, different parts of the industry. Um, here's an example, and here, here's why who's ever in this webinar, is there anybody who's a member of Voices.com? Here's why you should cancel your account. Here's what they're doing. Let's say for um, a certain project, they have their in-house staff working the project, right? Um, and you'll see those notices, those audition notices on there. They'll put a budget between 250 to 500 bucks. Well, here's what you don't know. And this doesn't happen with every single project, but it's happening more and more. And I see story upon story. As a matter of fact, I posted uh, a story that happened to uh, a friend of mine, Mark Cashman student, uh, just like a, a week ago. Um, Here's what they do. They, they, they'll basically take $1,000 from the client and basically post the job for like 250 bucks. So they're taking sometimes 50% or more commission on the job that you're doing. Plus, you're paying an annual fee to be a member there. Plus, the sure pay fees, they're basically taking a lot of money out of your pocket. So, uh, you know, they're, there's, they're getting a lot of heat from many pros in the industry. And frankly, they're, they're kind of scam artists and they've been caught multiple times doing this. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really awful. It's really awful. I'm glad you left Julie. It's a good thing to do. Um, I mean, think about it. They've been caught red handed doing it too, because, you know, for a client that posts a job and voices.com, Sometimes people will already know that client outside of Voices.com, and they'll have a conversation with that client. And they said, oh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, uh, I'm going through Voices.com for my new project, and the budget's 1200 bucks." Well, if you go on to that project on Voices.com, you might see that the project is listed at $300. It's awful. So stay away from them. All right. Andrew Rays is in the house. I enjoyed talking through my video game demo with Jan the other day. Jan, uh, you hear me say Jan Anderson. He's our uh, copywriter. He writes all the original scripts for all of our demos. Uh, here's why I think that's important, because there's a lot of companies around. We call them demo mills. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that they don't give out good information, but a lot of their demos sound the same. And a lot of their students are reading from the same scripts. And they all just kind of blend together. You know, it's like different flavors of ice cream kind of blended together. We don't do that. We write original scripts for our students based on your hobbies, your personality, your voice, what you've learned, what your interests are. Um, I think it's really important to have original copy on demos. And you do not see that often enough uh, around the country. All righty. Let's take some more questions here. Where do shortcuts lead to, says Rob Marley? The delete button. 
again, we go back to that's we're going back to talking about the demos. Um, by trying to do a demo yourself, you're taking a shortcut and clients are going to delete the email. Sometimes you'll even get blacklisted. You know, it's, it's amazing. Agents really have amazing memories for the shit that they get. You try to send them a self-made demo and your name will go on the bad list. You don't want the name. You don't want your name on the bad list because they, oh yeah, Rob, he sent us that crappy self-made demo three years ago. It's funny how they remember that stuff. Again, if you're really serious about it, you got to take the proper steps and do it the right way. Um, all right. Chris Johnson is here. I've already done training. Have a good commercial demo. That's good. Website is up. Been marketing myself through calls and emails, auditioning regularly on some pay-to-play sites, looking to really hit the gas with getting some good clients and jobs. I know it's a slow grind, but what is the best piece of advice for someone like me who has a good foundation, but is looking to uh, kick it up a notch? Sorry, I got a little nose itch. I think I'll talk about it for five minutes. I've got a nose itch. Um, Chris, I always had really good luck when I, uh, when I started emailing and calling audio visual departments and corporations. Nobody ever talks about it. I never see anybody talk about this in blogs. I never hear about it in podcasts. And I certainly never read about this in books. Major corporations in your hometown or in the big cities surrounding your area, they all have in-house production studios where they work on tons of e-learning uh, projects, PowerPoint presentations, uh, telephony jobs. You know, sometimes they're in charge of the entire phone system in, you know, in the huge... Uh, I almost said Nakatomi Plaza, which was from Die Hard. <laughs> I'm like, what? I, I promise I'm not watching Die Hard. Um, and they're in charge and they hire the voice talents to do it. Could you imagine being the, the voice of a big phone system at like 3M or Honeywell or General Mills or something like that? Plus, they always have to keep calling you back because they're always changing the prompts. That's a high buck gig right there. And a really good lead, by the way calling audiovisual directors of corporations. Um, sometimes you have to work a little hard to get through the gatekeeper, but it's an excellent lead uh, resource for sure. All right. Tawny recommended Paul Strick. Where does Make Money in Your Pajamas? That is a good book. And no, it's not just making money in your pajamas. He makes it sound easy by the title, but it's it's very clickbait type title. You'll see what I mean if you pick up the book. Um, Christopher Rodriguez, is it fine to use them to practice auditions? I got it. Oh, okay. You're talking about just like scripts that you find online. Yeah. I mean, we, our coaching scripts, a lot of those are online. I mean, we don't, with coaching scripts, it's a whole different ball game. You know, that's just to kind of practice your technique, see how you take direction and go from there. But when we do the demos, we make damn sure that we're writing original copy for your demos. So Christopher, I you know it's it's fine to practice those types of auditions. I know voice registry closed thanks to Voices.com, but um, Mike Hennessy, it appears Voices is favoring their premium members, leaving the regular members in the ditch. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, they're very greedy, greedy owners. It's really kind of sad because I I met the owners of Voices.com many many years ago at a voice conference. They were very sweet people, very sincere, at least so I thought. And this was back in the day where there was probably, I don't know, there was probably about three, 400 people on Voices.com. So it was really, it was a viable income resource, you know. I, I used to be on it, and I used to do quite well at it. And then they just started to get greedy. They're like, wait a minute, what if we handle the project and the client gives us their budget, then we'll post the audition on our site for for less than 50% of what they gave us or whatever. It's just awful. Nobody else does that. If you have to do pay to play, go do like Badalgo, B-O-D-A-L-G-O or Voice123. Uh, they're, run, they're run by some pretty good people. Um, very fair, very well run operations. They're not trying to scam voice talents. Um, check those out too. No problem, man. All right, um, we got about 10 minutes, and then we're going to kind of wrap things up. So if anybody has any questions about anything, uh, feel free to just make a comment here. 
And we've got a lot of really, really good questions in here today. Uh, speaking of pay-to-play sites, so let me touch on that for a second, because pay-to-play sites always present themselves as the only place you're ever going to get voiceover work, which, again, is another myth in the industry. Use that as just one of your platforms. You know, maybe spend an hour every morning auditioning on pay-to-play sites. But that's it. Don't put all your eggs in the pay-to-play basket. There's people that sit on some of these pay-to-play sites from sunrise to sunset doing nothing but auditioning for these gigs. And you know what? If you land a few gigs, great. If you get a lifetime client, fantastic. But you're spending like nine, ten hours a day on these sites. You're going to have far more success if you start marketing directly to producers, again, the audiovisual directors of corporations, e-learning clients, um, explainer video clients, you know, medical companies, medical companies, medical narration is huge. Spend some time marketing you, marketing directly to these different people. Don't, don't feel like you always have to go through a pay-to-play site. You know, people like Voices.com, they want you to think that you need them. And I'm here to tell you that you don't. And another thing to be uh, um, leery of is uh, pay-to-play sites, they always want you to stick a link on your website to their website. Oh, it's going to help the SEO of your website. Um, no, not really. It's not really going to help the SEO. And you know what it's going to do? A client's going to come to your website, and they're going to see that Voices.com link or that Voice123 banner, and they're going to click it, and boom. Not only could they potentially be gone forever, but you just promoted 15,000 other voices by putting their banner on your site. I know they're telling you to do it, but don't do it. For those of you that have websites that have Voices.com or Voice123, if you have banners on your personal voiceover website, get rid of them immediately. All right. All right, everybody having fun? Jan Anderson said that Sound Advice by Dan Friedman is a good book. Uh, great for down-to-earth explanations of home studio builds. So well, that's good. Andrew Rays landed a great client on Badalgo this week. Uh, two sessions. You know, that's the beauty of some of these. That's the upside to a lot of uh, pay-to-play sites. You know, sometimes this client will come back to you on a regular basis. Speaking of which, this is a business where it doesn't take 100 clients to make a good living. If you have seven to 10, maybe a dozen clients who are coming back to you on a regular basis, that's a pretty good living. Again, that's one of those myths that I talked about. Oh, well, you better be prepared. If you want to make money doing voiceovers, you're going to have to get a lot of clients. You're going to have to get about 100 clients. Again, not true. Scott Walton, any opinion on the voice realm? Well, other than the owner acts like an absolute ass on Twitter, uh, I don't really have any other opinions. I mean, they're really just another, you know, they're not Voices.com. I don't think they're scamming their talents, but it, it can. they do have some pretty low ball rates. Rob Marley, if you're still on, if you want to chime in about voice realm, he knows a little bit more about them. I do know that they like to get in little Twitter spats with pros about the bullshit that they post. And uh, their newsletter, their online newsletter called, uh, I think it's called Voice Over Herald or something like that. I might have that wrong. Uh, not only are the articles really outdated, but they their their writers are ghosts. I mean, they have written by blah blah blah, who's a who is a, a SAG AFTRA member and has done fifty five national spots, and this person doesn't even really exist. So there's a lot of makeup. They they, really, they make up a lot of shit. So be aware. Rob, I'm sure will will chime in. All right. Marlon, good to see you. Marlon is in our group class program, and he's here right now. What do you suggest to get more work for neutral native Spanish in the U.S.? It's a good question. Uh, working and recording from Mexico. What are the most common agencies for that? Uh, Marlon, I know that Trish Bassani, do you know who Trish Bassani is? She uh, is starting a registry called Voice Casa. Actually, she started it many years ago, but she's uh, relaunching it. And it's for Spanish-speaking voice talents. Um, so check with her on that. That might be a good avenue for you to go down. Unfortunately, I don't have any other magical answers for you um, except for that one. So 
as, uh, get in touch with her. All right. Um, okay, Rob. Rob has now chimed in about Voice Realm. Most of the jobs were $100 to $200. It was okay work. Their customer service ended up turning to be terrible, and I had to bail. Lack of professionalism. I bailed because the owner, I, I think his name's Robert or something. He was such a jackass on Twitter, fighting with pros and stealing hashtags. <laughs> you see, I mean, it was like a four-year-old runs the company, so I don't know. I'm not a fan. All right, Mark's got a good tax ID question. What is your advice on creating a company for VO with a tax ID versus doing VO business as yourself? Well, I mean, when you if you're just starting off, there's no I mean, being self-employed should be good enough, but when when you start getting busy, I would definitely consult with a CPA because there's going to be different, you know, uh you know, should I be LLC? Should I be S Corp? You know, I, I'm not, I don't have a license to answer those kinds of financial questions. So definitely uh, talk to a CPA about it. But I do know in the first few years that I was a voice actor, I was just, you know, I was just a self, you know, self-employed uh, voice actor. Now I'm S Corp. Um, but uh, that is a really good question. And I know I didn't answer it particularly well. Jan Anderson, voice realm is trash. <laughs> Stay away. James Cummings, excited for my verse, uh, first coaching session tomorrow. We're excited to be working with you, James. I know that you were uh, sitting back. You were one of those kind of uh, dudes that were sitting on the fence for a long time, and we're happy that you're uh, finally working with us. So thank you for that. Frank, Su is it Suarez, Frank? My sincere apologies. I think I'm screwing that up. Uh, but he's got a really good comment and question. I thought about joining my local chamber of commerce. Any tips on self-promotion that way? Absolutely. Networking in your own area is huge. I mean, you should be joining meetup groups, um, meetup.com if it's still around. It's kind of an outdated site at this point because people have really gotten together mostly on Facebook groups. But check out voiceover groups uh, in your hometown, Frank, and you might be able to get together with them. But yeah, Chamber of Commerce charges like a yearly fee, but you're also getting together with other business owners. That's never a bad idea to do that kind of networking in your hometown. That's a great, great idea. It's so great that I said the word grade twice. Frank Suarez. Suarez. Okay, cool. And you're welcome, Mark. All right, what are we looking at? About 645 uh, why don't we do, since we're kind of getting close to the 7 o'clock hour here, uh, let's do a wrap-up here. Let's do last call for questions or comments, anything voiceover related. By the way, if you came late, no big deal. We're not going to, you will not be fined. You can actually watch, this video will upload to VO Camp when it's done. Uh, it'll probably take forever because we've been on now for about 45 minutes. Uh, all right, so last-minute questions. Could you give us a snippet of the opening line of a typical cold call that you might make? Oh, man, Dan, putting me on the spot like that? Um, all right. You know, this comes from radio sales, too. Okay, here's here's basically how I would cold call a uh, like an audiovisual department. Or, or here's how I would – let me rephrase. Here's how I would cold call a corporation. Um Hi, Ron, can I have your uh, audio-visual department, please? Audio-visual department? And immediately, if you know that you have somebody that doesn't know what the hell they're doing, say creative department. Sometimes that'll get you to like three or four different places, but eventually you'll get the right one. Yeah, who does all your like in-house videos, you know, PowerPoint presentations? You know, throw me to that guy or girl. Most times it works. Sometimes they'll want to take a name and then, okay, can I have them call you back? It's like actually, uh, you know, I was I was told to call today because uh, you know I'm I'm a finalist for some. Pro I mean, some of it's kind of fib. You know, I fib a little bit. <laughs> I have to be honest. Uh, sometimes you have to fib a little bit just to get through the gatekeeper. So that's not a great example, uh, Dan. But I'll basically ask to speak to either the creative director or can you please transfer me to the audio division or the audio visual department. And usually that will work. Um, now, once you actually have the decision maker, then I just say, hey, I'm Terry Daniel. You know, I'm a voice actor. I'm literally right down the street. 
even if they're like an hour away, I'll just say, I'm literally down the street. You know, I specialize in e-learning and narrating PowerPoint presentations and uh, was just curious if, uh, if you needed some help with, uh, with any of your projects. I keep it really short and sweet. I try to always be their friend. I just kind of shoot the shit with the person. You know, I don't read from a script and I try not to make it too corporate-y. I, I really, if I have to do a cold call, and God knows none of us really like doing cold calls, but it's necessary in our business, I just try to be their friend immediately. I just shoot the shit a little bit, just real casual. You know, even when I leave them a voicemail, it's something that's real casual. Hey, Dan, Terry Daniel here, voice actor. I just live down the street. Uh, I know you do a lot of uh, in-house projects there, and uh, I'd love the opportunity to be the voice for one of your projects. Call me or I'll... No, but you, at least you get an idea there. And by the way, it doesn't hurt to actually write up a script just so you can practice it on your own before you make the phone call. It doesn't mean you have to read the script during the phone call, but get comfortable enough with the verbiage and some of the stuff that you're going to say before you make the phone call. Kevin McAdams is leaving us for the night. I'm going to be leaving shortly too, but uh, I appreciate it, Kevin, very much. Uh, Candace loves cold calls. Wow, they're fun. I like cold calls. Starting to get some traction, mixing it up between calls and emails. That's really the right thing to do. And really a good one-two punch is to send a client an email first and then let them know that you're going to call them a week later. How about that? If it's okay with you, I'd like to call you a week from Thursday. You know, that never hurts either. So I'm glad you love it, Candice, because some of us just really, really don't like doing it. Um, and James, yes, I'm going to get you going with some scripts tomorrow to get our feet wet and get you going just so I can see what you can do. So I'm looking forward to seeing you online. That pretty much does it for today, uh, unless anybody else has any other questions. I will say this uh, one more time. If you're, uh, we've got a lot of people in voiceover camp. And uh, just a, you know, a, a small percentage of campers are also our voiceover students. And uh, we enjoy it very much. Uh, we, love, we love being mentors. You know, we're voice actors, but we're also mentors. And we like to think that we're pretty good at it. So if you're ready to take the next step and you're interested in hiring a voiceover coach, send me an email, contact at voiceovertraining.info. That's contact at voiceovertraining.info. You can also PM me via the Facebook Messenger. That would be fine. Um, and I can send you a link to our voiceover training website, and you can view all the options. Timing is good right now. We just started spring enrollment. Uh, again, there's many members of uh, voiceover camp that are uh, uh, very happy working with us. Uh, we're also mentors, too, by the way. It's not so structured where we put somebody through a program and you have to be finished in four weeks and ready to do the demo. Some training companies, they already have your demo session scheduled before they've even heard you read one script. We don't work that way. We work with you until you're ready, until we're both confident that you're ready come demo time. Sometimes it's eight coaching sessions and a few group classes. Sometimes you need about 10 or 12. We have people that go through our program in three months. We have people that where it takes a year. You know what? It doesn't matter. You, you, you work with a coach until you're ready to do the demo. Um, so that's my sermon for tonight. All righty. I think that is, uh, that's going to be it for tonight. We're going to do another one next month. We like to do these uh, free voiceover webinars via uh, voiceover camp. Um, this was interesting tonight doing it via Facebook Live. I, I, I rather enjoyed it. We've uh, often in the past have used GoToWebinar, which has been really nice, although I do miss having uh, Rob and Tani on the call. we got to figure out a way to get all three of us in here, but at least they were in the, uh, the chat box uh, contributing, and I really appreciate their time along with uh, Jan Anderson. My name's Terry Daniel. I am a very happy voice actor and coach from Minneapolis. Thank you for attending the I Want to Pick Your Brain webinar. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.